Our top story is a heated racial controversy out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is now getting national attention because President Obama has weighed in. Henry Louis Gates, a renowned African-American professor at Harvard, was arrested at his home last week by a white police sergeant named James Crowley, an officer with a solid record. A third party had called 911, reporting a burglary at Mr. Gates' home. When Sergeant Crowley, no relation to me, by the way, arrived on the scene, the incident apparently got very heated. According to the police officer's report, quote, as I stood in plain view of this man, I asked if he would step out onto the porch and speak with me. He replied, no, I will not. He then demanded to know who I was. I told him that I was Sergeant Crowley from the Cambridge Police and that I was investigating a report of a break-in in progress at the residence. While I was making this statement, Gates opened the door and exclaimed, why, because I'm a black man in America? As I descended the stairs to the sidewalk, Gates continued to yell at me, accusing me of racial bias and continued to tell me that I had not heard the last of him. Crowley says that he warned Gates that he was becoming disorderly, but the professor continued yelling and the dispute spilled outside the home. Crowley then arrested Gates for disorderly conduct. The charges were later dropped. But now, Mr. Gates is saying he was the victim of racism and is demanding an apology from the sergeant. What it made me realize was how vulnerable all black men are, how vulnerable all people of color are, and all poor people to capricious forces like a rogue policeman. It was the fault of a policeman who couldn't stand a black man standing up for his rights right in his face. And that's what I did. And I would do the same thing exactly again. Now, we weren't there. We don't know what happened, and we're not taking sides. But you know what? The president wasn't there either. So why did he respond to a question about this incident this way at last night's presser? Now, I've, I don't know, not having been there and not seeing all the facts, what role race played in that. But I think it's fair to say, number one, any of us would be pretty angry. Number two, that the Cambridge police uh, acted stupidly in arresting somebody when they, there was already proof that they were in their own home. Joining us now from Los Angeles is Earl Ofari Hutchinson. He is the author of the book, How Obama Won. And from Boston is Bob Parks. He is a member of Project 21, a black conservative leadership group. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Earl, let me begin Thank with you. you. Um, again, none of us were there. None of us knows what happened, including President Obama. And yet, as president, he is the nation's chief law enforcement officer. So he really shouldn't be in a position of prejudging a case like this, right? Well, I don't think it's so much prejudging. I think there's two things that probably were going through President Obama's mind. One, he was asked a question. And certainly, in a public press conference, you ask a lot of questions, including presidents are asked a lot of questions. So it came up. He responded. And I think he's looking at it from this point of view. Racial profiling beyond just the Gates case, racial profiling has been a major point of contention, a major point of really division in this country. And also, remember, presidents say a lot of things at press conferences. They give opinions all the time off the cuff. And as far as racial profiling goes, if my memory serves me correct, President Bush, who is certainly no liberal, and also President Clinton, they address the issue of racial profiling many times and also condemned it. But Earl, you know what? This is an ongoing investigation. And again, I point out that the president of the United States is the nation's chief law enforcement officer. So sh shouldn't he have given, say, a more valuable neutral statement last night about the investigation and saying, look, I'm going to withhold judgment until I have all of the facts. Well, without second guessing, certainly what the president should have said or should not have said, what he said was about acting stupidly. I think basically he was given a personal reaction to a question that was asked impromptu. And also probably given the nature of racial profiling, the president himself, certainly coming from Chicago, having dealt with this issue many times uh, as a community organizer, was probably very mindful and very concerned about the issue of racial profiling. So I'm really not surprised that he would respond very passionately and even personally to it 
even though he is, yes, the, uh, the commander in chief and the president. Bob, let me bring you in. You know, uh, Bill Cosby, who has spoken out in the past very forcefully on, on race relations and, and spoken directly to the black community, said today that he was, quote, shocked by what President Obama had to say, seemingly in taking sides yesterday uh, against the police. Are you surprised? Are you shocked? Well, I'm not really surprised, but I, th I find it very ironic that the same president who had to compose himself and, and gather his words for five days after the aftermath of the election violence in Iran um, took an opportunity to make a statement that he proceeded by saying that he didn't have all the facts and then turn around and said that the Cambridge police acted stupidly. It would be like me being on a Boston talk show saying that the Red Sox played last night, but and I didn't see the game but uh, the Red Sox played stupidly. It's bad enough if I said that, and I'd be taken to task by the local sports crowd. If I'm the president of the United States, you would choose your words more carefully. And I understand it was a news press conference. These things, these questions come up all the time. But there's also a phrase that uh, people use quite often in press conferences. And that phrase is, no comment. That would have been quite apropos in the situation. Bob, you know, today the White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs tried to backpedal a little bit and said, no, he wasn't calling the police officer stupid. He said he thought the behavior was stupid, not the officer himself. But do you think perhaps this might raise questions as to whether or not President Obama sees things through the prism of race or perhaps his liberal ideology? Uh, that could be the case. I am not going to prejudge uh, his thoughts or not. Uh, let me rephrase that. I'm not a mind reader, so I'm not going to try to interpret what I think he may or may not have been, been thinking at the time. He said that. But that it being the case, as the president of the United States, he's the president of all people, and he should have thought about his words carefully before he made the statement he, did, he made. We, we can call it a rookie mistake, uh, but at the same time, his words have uh, uh, come with a megaphone that none of us can imagine. And these kind of things, especially I used to live in Los Angeles uh, as well a few years ago, and we know how quickly words can be inflamed in the community. Uh, these, these things can escalate. And you have to be very careful, especially as the president of the United States, of the words that you choose. Earl, here's the problem as I see it for President Obama. When he was campaigning, he presented himself as a transcendent figure, somebody who was going to try to bring to America a post-racial uh, era. And yet I saw what he did yesterday, and he waited unnecessarily and irresponsibly knee-deep into racial politics. Why? Well, you know, I don't agree with that. I don't think it was irresponsible. And I think certainly when you talk about an issue like racial profiling, this is not new. Uh, it's been out there for a long period of time. Certainly Bush, certainly Clinton, they talked about it, and a number of elected officials, up to and including the president. So I think, if anything, I would turn it around. I think the president would be remiss if he ducked and dodged a very sensitive, uh, a very troubling question and a very divisive question, yes. He does have a responsibility to bring people together, but he also has a responsibility to also give an opinion, give a view, certainly if that view is on an issue which many people are deeply concerned about. I don't think that's irresponsible at all. I don't think that this issue is going to go away, and in fact, the president may be forced to apologize for his comments. We shall see. Gentlemen, thank you very much.